Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a little uh, gouache painting, and these are the colors I had laid out on my palette yesterday when I painted this. And uh, the nice thing about gouache is that they're a lot like watercolors in the fact that you can just spritz them and reactivate them. Unlike acrylics, they don't stay um, permanent once they dry. And you can do a lot of the same things with acrylics that you can with gouache. Now, obviously, they're not going to be, um, they're kind of, they're an opaque watercolor, so they don't have the acrylic binder that an acrylic paint does, but you could still uh, do this with acrylics if you don't have gouache, you don't want to use gouache. So I'm hoping that this tutorial can keep my acrylic um, people happy. <laughs> because I don't, personally, I don't really like painting with acrylics that much. I'm going to add another light here. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit brighter. Okay, so this is just a scrap of mat board, and it was the inside of a, of a mat that I had cut, so I'm going to use that as my, um, as my surface. And I'm going to start off by putting in my flour, which is the largest part, and I'm going to mix a little, um, and do a little bit bit of red and this is the Lucas gouache that I got at Jerry's and I double checked my invoice they were um, it was $6.99 I thought I paid $12 for it but it actually only paid $6.99 for the set of 12 colors which I thought was pretty good so I'm mixing the pink and the red I'm getting this kind of like peachy color I'm gonna add a little bit of um, lemon yellow into that just to warm it up a little bit you can see my paint from yesterday really reactivated very well. And I'm going to start by putting in the shape of my flower. Um, I'm actually using this a little bit thinner than you would typically use it, uh, not on purpose, just because I guess I got a little too much water in there when I reactivated it. But it's not a big deal. You could paint on any porous surface with this. I wouldn't do a canvas unless you're going to put like a watercolor ground on it because you do need something for it to adhere to because this is a watercolor. This will come out of the tube like an acrylic paint, about the same consistency. I'm just blocking in my colors here. We're going to be putting more on, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to switch to a round brush and some brown. I got down here at the end of my palette. You may prefer to um, to let your paint sit a little bit with the water on it before you start to paint to uh, make sure it's nice and active. Put that stem in there like that. I'm going to put another one going that way. But you pretty much, you mix these just like um, just like any other paint. They're probably most similar to uh, to acrylics, with the exception of you can re-wet it and rework an area if you need to. Um, now because this is an opaque watercolor, it does contain a um, opacifier, and sometimes that can dilute the pigment so that it becomes less light fast. So you just want to kind of keep that in mind. A lot of times gouache is used for work that's meant to be reproduced because it's matte and it reproduces very well. But because of that, the uh, light fastness isn't such an issue. But I do know that M. Graham and Schmincke make a light fast gouache if you want to use it for fine art application and not worry about it. So just want to put that out there for you as well. And the little motif I'm painting is inspired by a vintage um, postcard. Okay, now I want to get my um, leaves base coated in. I'm going to go in with this flat brush. I'm going to mix up a nice bit of green. I'm going to go in with this yellow ochre. You, are, you will use a lot more gouache than, um, than you would if you're doing this in watercolor. So you will find that your paints will wear down quicker because you're putting like a, a, a thick opaque layer. And you can do this with regular watercolors and add some white, like all those tubes of white that come in watercolor sets. It's a great, um, great opportunity to use them. Grabbing a little blue in there to darken it. I like to put my darks down first and then add the lights. So I'm going to start by putting in a leaf here. I feel like I want a little more water in there to help it flow. I love that you don't have to waste any pigment. You can use it until it's all gone off your palette. I'm not going to bother with any highlights or shading at this point, so it's very much like acrylics in that um, in that respect. 
Uh, but I think as a watercolorist, that's why I'm much more drawn to gouache, just because it's it's got those watercolor qualities too. And I want one more right there. You can use any of your watercolor brushes for gouache, but I do find you want something a little bit stiffer. So uh, I probably would stay away from the mimic brushes for this, and I would go for like the um, like the synthetic brushes. These are those Fab Art kids brushes, actually. I'm gonna switch over to a smaller filbert. I do find it's a little easier to work straight out of the tube with a squash, so I don't think I would squirt so much out of my palette next time. I think I would just squirt squirt out what I would what I plan on using, just because I find that it is a little more difficult to get the consistency from a wet paint, but but it's certainly possible, and there's no need to throw away your paint if it's dried dried out on your palette. You can also use these as watercolors, but you might get more of a chalkiness uh, look to them because they are opaque, so they might kind of dry a little less vibrantly and, um, and a little more chalky. So just to give you that, that bit of info there. And the reason you want that stiffer brush as well is so that you can kind of move your paint back into a paste if it, if it dries up on you. I know a lot of um, illustrators will mix up, like if they're doing a book illustration, they'll mix up their colors that they're using in the layout in like little uh, cat food cans or just any little pots that they have just so they can always have it ready to go. Even if it's years later, they can return back to those mixes. So it's definitely, definitely not a bad thing to do. It's just, it does seem to be a little bit easier if you're working right from the, right from the pans or if you let your paint sit a little, little bit longer with the with the water on them. I'm not an expert with gouache. Actually, I haven't used it in quite a while, but um, but it's got the same. It's a, it's it's a close relative to watercolor, so I feel quite comfortable with it. Just giving these are little rosebuds here. I'm um, gonna put another one over here. just in the kind of flushing it in phase. Okay, I feel like I want this leaf to maybe be a little bit fatter. All right, now let's go work back on the flower a little bit. I do like to use filberts for this. They, um, they work really well. I also have some M. Graham gouache that I had put in little half pans. And this is very pigmented, but this is a much more expensive gouache. This would probably be about, you know, $6 a tube versus $6 for a set. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Not a, it's not important that you have that. You can use whatever you have. And I think I might put maybe a little bit of that blue in there too. And then I'm going to get the darker parts of my flower in here. I like the fact that you can build up layers and you don't have to be, it's not as fussy like what you work on is watercolor paints are. With watercolor paints, paper makes a huge difference. With gouache, I mean, you could work on cardboard, you could work on matte board, you could work on um, colored pastel paper. It's not as um, it's not as fussy. Now I want to grab some white. I just put a little bit of white here on the edge of my palette. I didn't put out too much because it's really easy to contaminate white, so I didn't want to have to waste a bunch of it if I got too much. And I'm gonna go in and get some of those mid tones in the petals. And I can go in later with a damp brush and blend anything that I'm not happy with how it's blending. I think I got too much purple though in that white. I'm gonna wipe away some of that and mix it in with a little bit of yellow. The 
the white looks really stuck on its own. So I like to um, I like to kind of bring it down a little bit. And this is almost the color of the background matte too, which is nice. And you do get kind of that vintage illustrator look, I think, with these paints, which is kind of kind of pretty. You could use this on your cards, like if you stamped an image, you could use this just like you would watercolors. Actually, it would probably work better because you don't have to worry about having um, really special paper for that. I'm going to let that dry and move on to my leaves over here. Actually, I can base coat in my... Um, my little rosebuds too will mat it. Put those, put some red right in those, right next to the green. I like the matte opaque finish that it dries too. But like I said, if you like to work in acrylics, you can totally do this in acrylics. Um, I'm hoping this will open up the type of the type of uh, tutorials I can do. Because I am not a huge fan of acrylics, I don't like to have acrylic supplies out. Um, these are so much easier on brushes, and uh, I think that it will be able to give you know a, a tutorial that people could follow in acrylics or or gouache or even even oils. I'm going in here with these really bright yellow portions of the leaves. It is too bright at this point, but don't worry because we can, we're going to be bringing it down. You can mix with the stuff we have underneath, so we don't have to worry about, see I can kind of kick up that paint underneath and get it to mix. Now if you don't have watercolor crayon, if you don't have gouache and you want to try this, you can use watercolor crayons. I want some texture, I'm bringing in some of that green. Watercolor crayons will work great, and in fact, when you sharpen your watercolor crayons, if you save the shavings in a palette, um, you can you can use that as gouache, and it works great. The Karen Dosh watercolor crayons will probably work the most like gouache, so if you have those, then just go ahead and use those. You don't have to go invest in um, in the supply. That's what I like about the um, this media is that there's so many different ways you can you can approach it, and so many different things you can. Um, so many different, it's such a versatile medium, I guess, and there's other things you can um, substitute for it if you don't have it. And I've never used casein, but I have had some people asking about casein tutorials, and I think you could probably do about the same thing, although I don't think casein is rewettable once it dries, but I'm not 100% sure. I've never used it. Um, I wasn't, I have used gouache before, and I wasn't looking to get into something that t was totally different supplies. In case I didn't like it, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to have all those supplies and uh, and not use them. Okay, a little bit of that. And you can see how every time we go over something and we add something, we build up that depth of color a little bit more. I just got into that red, but that's alright because it's making me a nice brown, neutral looking color, and that's nice too. And these, I mean, these, this particular set of gouache is very affordable, so you don't, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get into this if you don't want to, if you just want to try it and see. Okay. Um, now I'm going to clean my brush and get some of that white reactivated. Great use for all those tubes of white that come in all the sets and all the pans of white watercolor that we get, right? We can use those for this. I save them. A lot of people say they throw them away, but I always say that, save them because I know they can be used with gouache, even though I don't use gouache all that much. Now I'm going in and, and adding that into the wet paint here. Um, any place you'll want something a little bit lighter. Even with these inexpensive gouaches, I'm finding they don't really get muddy on me. If I was using them as a watercolor, they probably would feel quite chalky. So if you have some opaque chalky watercolors that you're not happy with, give them a try like this and see if it's something that you can uh, that you can work with. I always think that 
there's a, there's there's a use for every supply you know if if your supply isn't working for what you intended it to see if there's another technique you can use it for before you pitch it because you might come up with a whole new uh, technique a whole new way to use something that um, that could really bring you joy and I hope you're seeing the the build up here how every time you go in and you add something you bring another layer of dimension and I just love how it gives you that vintage uh, look and feel I feel like I want some yellow ochre so I'm going right into that and I can feel how my paint has softened up just by having that water that I squirted when we first started um, it's really starting to soften up now and become much easier to work with so I think next time I do this I would just um, I would spray it about 10 minutes before I record and then I would come in and uh, and start painting with it but now you know so you won't you know you won't have that issue when you come do it so I kind of like just build up the little strokes here I'm not doing a ton of blending if I want to blend when I'm done I can go in with a soft damp brush and I can work colors together but I'm not ready to do that at this point so everything I'm doing here is I'm pretty much just laying colors down that I want to have in there and I'm switching around to different size brushes so that I have a variety of line I'm gonna go back in to my reds I'm gonna mix up a darker color I'm gonna go in with um, I think I actually might take some of this violet and this uh, magenta color and on the Lucas paints uh, they do list the pigment names and on the M Graham paints they do list the pigment names so um, you can see what you're buying which is nice they're using and most of the signal pigments I found in the um, actually both of the ones that I have I don't I only have five Lucas colors so I don't have a ton to go by there but um, but that was nice on this inexpensive set because I really didn't have super huge high hopes and I'm just putting in those darks Um, I think I want to add a little bit of white to that and blend it up into that petal. You can define any edges that you feel like maybe are getting lost and you can make any petals bigger if you feel like the flower got a little too small you can widen it up it's very forgiving and I think that's why illustrators like it so much that if you know a client had a change or something on a design they can easily just go back in with the paint and and alter it I can't remember how much time I spent on this other one. I kind of, kind of uh, went back and forth um, while I was working on it. I went away from my desk and back to my desk, so I don't know how long that took me to be honest. I want some darker colors in my leaves there. I find the filberts very useful on this uh, style of painting. Yeah, you can see how much creamier that paint is now. my shadows done in there you don't use as much water as you would with watercolor that's another thing I wanted to mention it's uh, it's drier using it much drier so that might take a little bit of getting used to if you're used to watercolor oh I like the depth the shadows are giving me that shadow under that leaf there I probably won't take as much time as I did on the uh, my first one just because I was a uh, I kind of had all the time in the world. I don't want to keep you too long, but I do want to get the fundamentals for you. Uh, okay, I'm going to switch to a smaller round brush because I want some of this in the rose 
buds as well. And you'll get a feeling for how much water to add. If your brush is dragging a lot, you'll know you need a little bit more. Um, a, a flat or a filbert is going to push the paint around a lot easier. So if you're finding that like the round is just too floppy and soft, then just, just use a flat brush. Same as if you're using like watercolor pencils. You know, sometimes you need that, that more sturdy brush to, to get the job done. Same thing here. Maybe a little bit more of that green up here. Now I'm going to go right in with some yellow. I'm going to grab this yellow because it's a little bit more pigmented. This is the M. Graham. You can see how it really holds its own against that. Um, the uh, green there. And I'm adding some of that color in. dries really quick, which is kind of nice because you can just go right over it. So if you have a frustration with oils that, um, and you don't like acrylics, you can try this because it'll dry quick, but you can always go back in with a wet brush and, um, and manipulate it. I mean, you can see just how opaque it is. It's really nice. You could use this all, like on top of other things too. Like if you had a Copic, or alcohol, other alcohol marker illustration, you're like, oh, I don't like it, I need to get back some white, you can use this. Now, you wouldn't want to go back over it with your markers because the nibs would pick up, would probably pick up this paint and ruin them, so you wouldn't want to go back in. But if you're like, oh, I just forgot to put highlights in the eyes or I just need a little something, you could go in and you could add that. So I think, you know, I, I, I really had fun painting this and if it's okay with you guys, um, I think we could do some tutorials in this and then you could follow along in acrylics if you prefer. You'd follow along in oils if you wanted to, although I still plan on doing some oil tutorials because I do like painting in oils, but um, I've always felt a little badly because people do request acrylic tutorials a lot and I'm just... I'll start and I end up, honestly, I just scraped a canvas, scraped all the paint off a canvas the other day because I was trying to do an acrylic tutorial and my heart wasn't in it and it was just garbage and I was just so frustrated. But, um, but I think since there's so many similarities here that you could follow along with a medium of your choice. I know my tutorials aren't going to please everyone, but, um, I do try to, uh, to accommodate my awesome viewers. Now something that's also kind of pretty is that the edges of these of the leaves will actually have a little tinge of red on them so and it kind of does help define things a little bit so i want to go ahead and go in and do that and then you can also pick up the serration on the edges of the leaves too and it just gives you that nice pop and contrast And then with this same fine brush, I can go in and I can add little details around here. Twist your brush in the paint to get a nice point, just like you would with acrylics. It's a very similar, very similar experience, but for whatever reason, I am just much more comfortable with that and I think part of it stems from the fact that I like to keep things simple when I'm painting and I can use the same supplies as I have for watercolors. Um, cleaning my brushes is easy and uh, and I'm much more likely to you know do a quick tutorial if I can get the supplies quickly and easily and uh, yeah so it stems from my laziness mostly but um, but I think a lot of us are limited on time and resources and if using a, medium, a certain medium makes it possible for you to create, then why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you use that medium? 
And for some of you, that medium will be acrylics because maybe that's all you can find at your local store, or maybe that's what you have. And maybe that's all you use, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to have, you know, watercolor or oil brushes. You're just going to use what you have, and that's the best supplies to use. I feel like I'm just rambling. I'm just highlighting here. I like to have a little, little yellow in my highlights for this. I think it makes it look a little bit more vintage. Um, and I'm just seeing if I need any more pink mid-tone areas just to kind of um, brighten it up a little bit. Sometimes I'll overlap the highlight, especially in the center if I've got a little too much purple going on, if I have a little too much white going on. And do some white, whitish green highlights on my little rosebuds as well. I, I like that, it seems like the white doesn't overpower, like it seems like I'm always getting in trouble with white and oils or acrylics. I get too much in there and then um, it just kind of overtakes everything and I just feel like I can keep layering and keep things fresh with the gouache and I'm not exactly sure why that would be but um, but that's my experience with it anyway and you can always thin it down and do watercolor techniques so if you're you know you're not sure what you like you can always try this and then if gouache isn't for you you know thin it down use watercolor paper and do a watercolor technique. It won't be as vivid probably as your traditional watercolors because they'll be opaque, but you certainly can do that. Any, any place I'm seeing that I might be lacking in color, I'm just going in with it. And honestly, you can really play uh, with the design a lot this way. shadow there. And I think I want to go right back in with some bright red. I'm going to take it right off of this uh, this pan and I'm just going to go in. Oops, I think I do need a little violet in there that's a little too intense on its own. And just freshen up. Hopefully I didn't stick my head in the shot. I'm, I'm getting used to filming upstairs. The instinct of this paint is to layer on top. It's not to blend in. So that's helpful if you're building a painting and you're used to using acrylics, I think. But if you want it to blend in, grab a, just take a, like a flat or filbert damp. You just kind of squeeze off the extra water. And you can keep working in this area, and look, you get that nice blend. See that? I'll sh show you one more time. So that's the one I blended, the other two aren't. So I just got this, uh, I like to just dip the brush in the water and squeeze it, and then I can go in this area where I want it to blend, and just gently pat, and I can blend my colors together really effortlessly. You just need a slightly damp brush. So those are dry. That's a, those are dry colors, and they'll just they'll just blend for you. So you have the option. You have the option of it working like an oil. You have the option of it working more like an acrylic. And uh, and I like that. And I like the fact that I could squeeze my paints out, and I could go um, hiking and bring them with me. And then if I want to stop and paint somewhere, I can do that. And I lost my little highlights up here, so I'm just gonna go in and put them right back in. My biggest highlights, my brightest highlights. And I could do a little pink on the petals if I want to because I did it on the other one and I like the way it looked. Whoops, too much water. You do want to watch out for like uh, water droplets because water droplets will uh, be an issue, just like they are in watercolors, I'll lift the paint. But 
there you have it. A uh, very quick and easy motif to do with gouache paint. This is my first one that I spent a little more time on, so I just wanted to kind of show you that. But I hope you give it a try. Again, I grabbed these on super clearance. I'll show you what the box looks like. Um, from Jerry's. They did not sponsor this video, but I even rolled the price, $6.99, because I misquoted it last time. And these are the tubes. I think they're probably about 10 milliliters, maybe 15. Um, 12 milliliter tubes. And um, yeah, that they're, I'm, I'm happy with them, and I think you would be too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber and you don't want to miss any of my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and a little bell next to it so you'll, uh, you'll hear whenever I have a new tutorial. And thanks for watching. Till next time, happy crafting.